I start the case by making three one millimeter paracentesis incisions, two superiorly, one inferiorly. This is done with a one millimeter blade and done vertically, not in the beveled entry site. I am presently using a clear corneal incision, uh, and I do this with a 3.2 millimeter keratome. This is beveled in the usual fashion as you would for a clear corneal phaco. An irrigating decimate stripper is introduced into one of the paracentesis wounds and a scoring is made inside the surface marking, which is a 9 millimeter marking. Uh, uh, this is done just inside of that to avoid having uh, exposed stroma and potential peripheral corneal edema. Most of my size graphs are 9 millimeters or 8.75 millimeter in diameter. It is not critical to score 360 degrees and even 180 degrees will work just as long as we can get a loose edge that we can start to strip in the next stage. The INA tip bevel up is then used to engage the decimase membrane and uh, remove it in a capsule rexus type of tear. It is important in Fuchs patients to remove all the central decimase and guttata, less important in a graft and pseudophagic bullous keratopathy. I use a 0.5 millimeter tip uh, under using the INA maximum settings and any loose peripheral tears are also removed to avoid it rolled up uh, decimase which can act as an interface spacer and predisposed to dislocations. Three full thickness stab incisions are made in the mid peripherally in a circumferential manner with the same diamond blade used at the start of the case. They will be used at the end of the case to, to drain fluid from the interface. The donor tissue, which has been cut at the beginning of the case by myself with a 300 head from the Moria ALTK system, is then dried of any opisol fluid. And a thin layer of heline is put on the superior half of, of the endothelial surface. This is the half that I'm going to overfold and helps prevent any endothelial touch to the Teflon block. I prefer an overfold of approximately 60-40, with the 60 being on the top fold. Point fixation forceps are then used to grab the folded donor tissue, which is then inserted through the clear corneal incision. These point fixation forceps are sometimes a little slow to let go of the tissue and, and it is important not to extract the tissue when removing the forceps. The tissue is then nudged in a more nasal position so I can introduce the INA in a dry fashion to go underneath the folded donor tissue and I pin it up against the stroma and then with aspiration unfold it as I'm on the stromal side. This is done in a very controlled technique. The tissue is then centered by ballotment from the limbus and the chamber slightly shallow to keep it in that position.
an air bubble is introduced under the donor tissue. Uh, and if there's any movement of the donor at that point, I can reposition uh, by further limbal ballotment or going through one of the stab incisions uh, with the cannula and rotate the donor into proper position. Once proper centration is achieved, a fully interior chamber bubble is inserted uh, and stroking the surface helps remove any interface fluid. The bubble pressure should ensure a, a, a tight anterior chamber of at least 20 milligrams of mercury. The, lastly, the paracentesis stab incisions are drained with the same 30 gauge cannula and the aid of a Wexel sponge. This removes any interface fluid, uh, reducing dislocation rates. The patient is then sent, sent to the recovery room to lay supine for one hour, at which time it, the part of the bubble is burped to ensure no pupillary block.